I spent years and years going in circles trying to become a profitable trader, but when I threw everything out the window and focused on one simple strategy, my trading turned from losing me money to actually making me money. This is the biggest pitfall that every trader falls into when they come to trading, is thinking you can master multiple strategies and patterns and become profitable with them all. But this is probably what's holding you back from becoming a profitable trader. So let me try and fix that for you and save you from the headache of wasting potential years and walk you through the strategy that saved my trading career. I have found it way more profitable to focus on key areas of support and resistance in the market and allows you to focus on high areas of profitability. And in this trade where I risked about $600 and made almost $3,000 in that one trade, you're able to risk a small amount and get a high reward. With this strategy, I have been able to grow a small account starting with a risk of about $50 per trade to now risking over $600 per trade and still growing. Some of my biggest wins at the moment are close to $3,000 in profit. And I only trade for 90 minutes a day. I don't spend hours and hours at the computer. I open up my charts, look for key areas in the markets to trade and wait for a five step entry checklist. I have made over the years trading this strategy. All I use to read what the market is doing is the candlesticks of the chart. And once you master reading candlesticks, you can honestly read any chart or time frame you want. So you can use this strategy on any market or time frame. Personally, I trade the futures market because of the simplicity and leverage it gives me, but you can trade on whatever you want. And I also day trade this strategy, but if you want, you can take trades over multiple days. Just change the time frame you're trading. Now, let me walk you through the multiple trades I've taken over the last month and show you the five step entry checklist I use every day and how you can exactly execute the strategy yourself. So the first thing I do every day in my checklist is I want to find the key areas of support and resistance in the market. And so with the market currently trading going into this trade right here, well, looking at the over the last few days, you know, it's a couple of weeks here, you can see that the NASDAQ futures here on a 15 minute chart, well, there's a pretty clear resistance zone up here. I use zones because the market never bounces in the exact same area price exactly every time. You know, it, it, think of it as supply and demand. The market's more likely to bounce off of this area because that's where the buyers are. And so as the market comes down here again, I'm going to assume that we might get a bounce here again because the markets bounce off this area really multiple times. It's likely to do that again. And so what I then do is I zoom in to a smaller time frame chart and analyze what the chart is doing on a smaller time frame and get in when I see the rest of my five step entry checklist show up. The bigger picture is telling us that there is a likely good chance to bounce here. And then the smaller time frame shows us when the downtrend into that area is starting to reverse because the hardest part about trading reversals is knowing when the trend is going to reverse. Counter trend trading can be very, very profitable because of that, you know, low risk, high reward potential. But it's very, very easy to think you've reached the bottom because, you know, oh, right here, it's starting to bounce and then the market keeps going lower. It's all about reading the trend. If you think about when a trend makes lower lows and lower highs, that's kind of what a trend looks like. And then at some point it makes an extreme low and starts to reverse that trend and start making higher highs. And so we want to try and get in. I try and basically get in right here after it started to show, okay, now it's starting to, the swings are starting to shift and there's indicators showing that it's shifting. And so the first thing that I like to do is just make sure that this overall trend that I'm seeing into that area is slowing down and potentially breaking it. The simplest way to do that is with a trend line. And so right here, the market had a very clear trend line formed off of these two bounces. And so I drew a trend line off that and just extended it lower. And so the market tried to continue lower and bounce off of it right here, but it ended up failing and, and broke right here. For me, that's my first signal that, okay, I have two things checked off in my checklist and I think that the market might start to slow and I can look for a reversal. And so you can see that even though we broke this trend line, 
that doesn't necessarily mean the market's just gonna all of a sudden just shoot up from there. That's something that I've done in the past where I think, oh, the trend line's broken, that means it's gonna reverse all of a sudden. That's not true. What I found is you don't wanna get in right there. That is, sometimes works out, of course, Anything in the market can work out at any time, but over time, that's not a profitable thing to do. What I've realized is wait for the market to make some kind of pullback. And here you can see it made another push lower. And that push lower was very, very strong. Look at how big these three candlesticks right here are. Really this big one in here in the middle is a very, very strong bearish candlestick. There's a lot of momentum pushing that comparing the size of it to you know some of these over here it's massive and so what that does is it shows a lot of momentum all of a sudden and what i've realized over time is i call this a reversal catalyst or climactic move is all of a sudden the market is making an attempt to keep to keep the trend going lower but what happens in reality is that it loses steam because of that and essentially it's becomes overexhausted and all the sellers dry up. And what this does is it gives a chance for buyers to come in and start to gain strength. And of course, coupling that with the fact that we're already at that major support zone that we know buyers are more likely to come in, that's really what gives us the power of increasing our likelihood that there is a larger move higher. And so that's what I wanna see as my third step is really the catalyst is showing you that this has a lot more reversal opportunity and likelihood because it's made this essential fake lower. Some people will see this and think, wow, the trend is gonna break the support level. Look at all this momentum. And then in reality, what happens is if you look at actually the swings here, we had a big swing down here. It made a little pullback, big swing down here. It made a little bit bigger of a pullback. And then we had a big swing down. But if you look and compare the lows here, is this new low down here was very, very, wasn't much farther lower than this one comparing to this low in here. And so that shows you the trend is starting to lose momentum. And so the third step that I like to do is if we go back to just thinking about our simple downtrend is the market is going to eventually start making higher highs and higher lows compared to before when it was making lower lows and lower highs. And so this is a very simple, but very, very crucial thing in the market to show you that it's starting to reverse is, you know, just the overall, it's showing you the overall structure of the trend is changing. And you can see that as it makes this new extreme low, and I'm, you know, going through this and checking off my checklist as I'm watching the charts and trading every day, I'm thinking that, okay, look right here. It looks like it's starting to make that higher low. And you can see looking at this, okay, if this shoots up here, I would confirm that this is a higher low or that fourth step that we're looking for in our checklist. And so the last thing that I wanna look for in my checklist is a strong reversal candle that really confirms that this higher low is happening. Essentially, I wanna see a very bullish candle happen right here because what that does is it shows me that, okay, the markets come down here, it started to make this move down here. And you know, you don't know, this could just keep going down. And so that's why you can't just randomly buy. That's why I wait for this confirmation to happen. And so when this confirmation happens and a big green candle happens here, that to me shows that, okay, the market has moved up here and it's showing that higher low and that change in structure. And so that's the confirmation you have to wait for. I always wait for a candlestick to finish forming because if we go back in the recording here and you see this candlestick right here, it looked very bullish. And so right here, this would be essentially confirmed if the candlestick finished forming right there. But you can see, I had this little indicator that says there's two minutes left in the candlestick. And you can, if I, you know, zoom back forwards again, you can see that changed a lot in those two minutes. And so that is the really, really crucial thing about waiting for the candlestick to finish forming. And so as the market started to reverse that really quickly is I did jump in here about 30 to seconds, 30 seconds earlier before the market closed. So I am going against that rule a tiny bit, but with 30 seconds left in the candlestick, it's almost there. And I was also watching this on a one minute chart. 
And so it was showing a ton of momentum in that way. And so I'm okay Order jumping kill. in a little early. I made a conscious decision of doing that. That's the key thing is not making an impulsive decision of worrying you're gonna mess up, miss out, making a conscious decision of, okay, it made this kind of this bearish candlestick right here. If you kind of read into what these candlesticks say is the market made an attempt to go lower and then it moved up and then made another attempt to go lower. That's kind of what this candlestick is showing that reversed and went up here. And so, you know, it's making kind of a double bottom on a really small time frame scale. And so I jumped in on that trade and just let the thing play out from there. And so for my trades, once you get in, you know, the trade's not over, right? That's half the battle. And so for me, where I put my stop loss every trade and I never move it because you can never move your stop loss because you do not want to increase your risk on the trade. And so this trade, I think I was risking about $600 in the trade. And so I put it below because the whole idea of why we're getting into this trade is the structure of the market, right? And so if the idea if if I get in here and the market, you know, starts to go sideways or it breaks this key new higher low that's in place, I get out of the trade because I found over time is, you know, the idea is not working and you just got to move on. You're not always going to be right when it comes to trading. What I found over time is important to just cut your losses and move on. And the best trades usually work out pretty quickly in your favor. And so just to kind of zoom through how I manage these trades once they kind of get going is once it kind of breaks out in my favor is I will move the trade to break even. The idea is, well, it's moved in my favor a little bit, but it could, you know, come back against me. And then as the market kind of moves up more and more in my favor, I like to move with the swings. Cause again, I like to just move with the structure of the market. That's how I found to be most successful at reading and moving with the swings. Now, when you are first starting out, I would suggest not doing a kind of more fluid management style like this. It's hard to read what the market is doing and make the correct decision because you're making a ton of decisions as you see the market start to really move in your favor here. And so that's taken me years and years to get better and better at, and I'm still getting better. But when I first started out, I started with just going for a fixed profit target of just going for 2x. And so this trade would have probably got out if you were going for a two, two times profit target, probably would have got out somewhere right here, right? And so sometimes you do miss if a, an amazing swing happens like this. But again, of course, not all my trades happen like this. These don't happen very often. This is just an amazing example of what can happen. And so we'll get into a couple more examples here in a minute where to show you a, a couple more key steps in this strategy, there's a really better climactic move kind of example. And the big thing to remember is the market does not show up the exact same every time. This trade is probably one of the more clear ones I've had recently. And so I wanna show you kind of when you're actually trading, what some of those weirder looking ones can look like because those are just as important to know how to trade. And so close up that trade for about $2,800, I think at the end. So to show you another example Order is build. here we are on the NASDAQ, honestly, just a couple weeks later, and the market is still kind of in this range. Now, one thing though is, so we're still looking at the NASDAQ here and check this out right here. And so we're currently at the highs. And so this strategy, you can bet the market's gonna go down or you can bet the market's gonna go up. So you can make money both directions. And so here, the market has been bouncing up in this area for quite some time. And so when I open the charts on this day, the market was trading right here. And so we're kind of a little bit away from this zone. But again, remember zones are subjective. You can come up to the zone like here and reverse a little bit before it, you know, because maybe the zone is a little bit further and it, it is all the way down here. And so I'm okay with trading away from the zones a little bit, but again, don't go too crazy with that. And a big thing that really helped me with this trade right here was seeing that there is also this downtrend line right here based off of these two swings that the market was butting into right here. I saw that the market was likely going to potentially bounce there. And again, this is only if all of my other checklists line up. That's the whole thing. The market can reverse anywhere, but the big thing is to have it at these levels and so have it as all these things line up. And so going through a lot more quicker now is, you know, uh, the first thing is here's our uptrend. That is very, very clearly broken. The market's 
been going sideways. The market opens up at 6.30 my time. And so you can see right here, the market kind of went sideways for a while, opened up and then started to move. And so just like we were talking about last time is I want to see is seeing this loss of a momentum right here is great where the market starts to go sideways like this. A lot of the time that can show that, okay, well, the market's going to lose momentum and start moving lower. But the key is when I see something like that is not to just short and bet the market's going to go down with my stop above here, because what I found again, just like we talked about before, is the market needs to make some kind of reversal catalyst, something that where it essentially makes an attempt to go the other direction than you want, which gets people excited. You know, a lot of people might see this as, okay, well, the market's gone up here. It started to go sideways. It's kind of sitting there gaining more momentum, and then it's going to break out here. And you know, the trend's just going to continue higher and I'll make a ton of money buying on this breakout right here. And that can totally happen. And maybe that does happen right here. But what confirms it for me is when you see this massive move back lower is when it gives that back up really quickly with momentum. And that shows me that sellers are coming in here. There's a lot of strength on the seller side and this strength of the buyers that they apparently had here for a couple minutes was given up really quickly. And so that's kind of the third thing checked off on my list is seeing that happen. And so when I'm trading and I see this reversal happen in real time, it gets really exciting. And you start to think when it started to go this fast, FOMO sets in and you think, oh my God, I have to get in here right now. What I've noticed over time is these kind of moves right here is if the market makes a big move like this and it goes sideways and it does end up giving, starting to go lower, it's gonna give that whole move back up. And so a lot of the time for a trade like this is my targets down here. And so if I'm risking something like this, and you know, the targets down here, that's amazing risk reward like we want, right? And so the hard part is though, when you see this happen is not FOMOing, which what I mean is fear of missing out of jumping into the trade because it's so easy to think, oh my God, it's moving so quickly. I'm gonna miss out, I have to jump in. And what happens a lot of time is you'll get a really bad entry. The market actually will pull back here and you can see the market is pulling back here and again going through that checklist is this reversal is not confirmed yet it's looking really really good but the market i have seen plenty of times where the market will do this come down and then just shoot back up and make a new high and so the whole idea is waiting for this lower high right here to happen and i remember it wasn't that many days ago i was in this trade and I'm waiting for the market to show me that reversal. And so it, it started to make it right there. And so here I'm starting to put orders in thinking that, okay, I think it's gonna, I wanna get in when it breaks lower. It's kind of made this break here. And I wanna get in on the break of this move that it's made. And so I, I'm feeling a little nervous because, well, the market's really choppy. And so I don't wanna get in based on a, a little kill. bit of chop. But once this candlestick formed really bearish, I thought that's a great signal. I have to just push through that nervousness because you're always going to be nervous getting in a trade. I've done this for years. I've practiced this, practiced this strategy and been successful with it. And I'm still nervous every trade I get into. And so no matter how confident you're in, there's always going to be that uncertainty because looking at this, you still don't know what direction the market's going to do. You don't know what it's going to do. And so it can just take forever to, you know, play out sometimes. And in reality, the market over the last couple of weeks going into this trade has been insanely choppy. It's just been really back and forth and just a crappy market to trade in. I've only taken a couple of trades over the last few weeks. It makes it really unlikely for the market to just work out really nicely and just shoot lower. It's more likely to, you know, see what it's doing here and just sit there and chop. And so what I found is I still try and just give it some room. But when I see the market make you know, kind of a, a move lower and a pullback like this and a start attempt to keep going lower. I then you can see I moved my stop loss below there and then it's made another push lower here. And so I'm starting to see, okay, is there a trend line that I can look at to see where the market's with? And so once I see this trend line start to, you know, hold here, I'm thinking, okay, this is another low pullback here. I want to, you know, close out my profits if it looks like it's going to start to bounce there. And so 
you know, anytime the market makes kind of a double bottom like this, you know, it, it might just start to knock me out. And so that's the biggest thing when it comes to managing trades is get out when the market is kind of telling you that it's not great. Do not get married to the trade because at the end of the day, my always my best trades, like you saw in the last one, you know, there might be a little bit of chop in the beginning, because, but that's when the market's, you know, switching that momentum versus now that momentum should be moving in my favor really well the the trend should be shifting and if the market's just going to kind of sit here and go sideways i don't want to be in it because i want to be smart with my stop loss and get out when it looks like it's going to go against me or just sit around and not really give good profits and so you can see here it's, it's kind of sitting around and it eventually just kind of knocks me out there and i believe it just chopped around there for quite a while let me show you two more crucial concepts that i have not gone over that are crucial to this strategy. And so what we're looking at here is now oil futures. And on the left here, we have a 15 minute chart. And so again, like always, I'm looking for the key areas of support or resistance. And right here going into this day, which was just a couple of days ago, the market has come up to this level and started to you know, make a couple swings off of here. And so my thinking is, hey, you know, this looks great for a potential reversal. We have a chance for a, you know, move lower. Even if it's just a move from here to here, that's going to be with entering it on a smaller time frame chart, that's going to be a 3x trade. And of course, if it gets moving lower down here, boom, we have a home run. Those kind of trades can make your year. You do not need many of those to have a crazy, crazy profit. And so going into a smaller time frame chart, just like I always do, we want to analyze the chart. And so one thing to look at here, zooming back, is look at this chart. Again, talking about the last couple of weeks is the market has been terrible, honestly. Look at the candlesticks here, is they're just chopping, they're all on top of each other. There's very, very little movement and volatility. And to trade really any strategy, you need volatility. And even with this strategy, a reversal strategy, you really, really need volatility. And so one thing is with this strategy is you have to have that risk reward potential every trade. Just like we talked about with all these trades is you need that potential for the market to move and give you that risk reward potential. And some of that is, you know, okay, are you far enough away from where the market has room to move to the nearest other end of the range? Like here, we want to make sure we have room to move to, you know, kind of a, a smaller support level. Or is the movement in the market likely going to give you a clean trade that you can profit from? Because, you know, if you think about that last trade we just did is it was all over the place and just kind of sitting there and not really moving. And so because of that, it's unlikely for you to make a really good profitable trade. And so what that does is it increases your risk on the trade because every trade, you know, let's say you have a 50 50% chance to win or lose, but some trades you have a good chance to make a really high profit, like in our first trade and other trades, the chance to make a high profit is lower. And so your risk reward there is not as good, making the trade not as profitable in the long run. And so right now we are budding into this resistance level up here. And actually looking at the checklist is, you know, there's kind of a climactic move right here. There's a lower high made, there's a nice bearish bar. And so, you know, the only thing is that's not broken is this uptrend, I would say but it looked pretty close to making a trade and getting on a potential trade. And I actually thought about it in real time, like, hey, you know, I see it, I could jump in right here and there's good risk reward. And the only thing holding me back from that, well, one was, you know, the trend wasn't broken. And so every time I wanna have all five of those things checked off, there's a reason why they're there. Don't skip out on one. But the other thing was, is, you know, looking at the bigger picture, is even if we go to a five minute chart of this is the market's just kind of sitting up here it's going back and forth and chopping and and on a 15 minute it shows that really well and here on a one minute you know the swings are bigger but again looking at the candlesticks is that it's it's really really crappy honestly and so what i did is i thought i want to wait for the concept that we haven't talked about to show up and what that is is a failed 
breakout. And so what that does is it's very similar to kind of what we talked about, especially in the last trade. But what it does is we have our resistance level up here. And looking at this is it's the highs, you know, the highs of the range or the resistance zone are right here or the top of the zone. And so what I want to wait for is I want to wait for it to break out of that because again, like with the last one is breakout traders will think, okay, it's breaking out. I'm going to buy, which of course it works sometimes. I'm not saying it doesn't and they'll get in long, you know, maybe with not as much confirmation and then they'll go higher. And so what I'm doing is I want to wait for that to fail. And so you can see here, it's starting to do that. And again, you can see here, I have an uptrend drawn now. I'm trying to see, okay, where's the uptrend? What am I looking for here? And I wanna see that fail. And so what I looked for is, well, this looked really good right here. And so the next thing in our checklist is, you know, wait for that pullback, wait for it to make a lower high right here. And so I'm watching this, I'm like, okay, where's the big red candle? I'm waiting for a big red candlestick to show up here and I'm gonna bet lower and, and get in short bet the market's going to move down, but that never happens. And so there's no trade. And so again, just waiting. Okay. It makes another high part of me is starting to think, you know, maybe this is just going to break out and I'll move on with my day. But I do want to see that maybe this sets up a head and shoulders pattern. And so what that is, is essentially just reading the structure of what we're looking is a head and shoulders pattern is just taking into account this swing, this swing, and then this swing That's a head and shoulders pattern. And that's what I want to get in on. And so you can see here, I put in an order because I saw that this candlestick order right here sales. made that move higher. It made that attempt to go higher, made a nice lower high. And so you can see here, it kind of did that as well with this smaller one. But the, re the key I've realized over time is to not go with these small ones. It needs to be a solid amount of movement. And so what this here is reading into these kind of candlesticks right here this one makes a good break lower there's some reversing right here happening some strength lower and then we see come in the buyers this is the attempt to keep breaking higher and then i say okay i don't want to get in right here i want to get in at the break of the low because that's when it's you know i i've started to like that as a confirmation of it making a new low and, and breaking that and showing that shows even more weakness and strength to the downside. And so I put in my order there, it filled and moved really quickly in my favor, which was great. When you ever see that, it gives you a lot of confidence because sometimes there's, there's, there's a lot of worry when you just jump into a trade. And, and at this point, I'm thinking, you know what? It's still bullish. I have to give it room. It's choppy. I have to let it move around. And you can see that I'm looking at, okay, well, there is actually this uptrend right here that we just bounced off of. And so maybe that'll ruin my trade. And I haven't moved to break even yet because I want to see it start to move lower. And so there it starts to move lower a little bit. And I'm thinking if it does a double bottom right here and comes up here, I'm okay getting out of the trade at a scratch or a small loss because the trend is overall up. Oil is overall bullish at the moment. If I bring up the overall chart, it's been in, in an uptrend for the last month. And so I haven't even been trading it recently. And so this is my first trade in honestly the last month in it. And so I'm being cautious with that of realizing that it's unlikely that it reverses here, but everything showed up and I still want to take a stab at it, but I want to cut my losses if it just does a double bottom here and knocks me out. And so it, it does knock me out here at a small loss, but again, that's okay. You know, I'm looking for those spots where it shows up really well. So if you really liked this strategy, this video right here will walk you through the exact steps I took from starting with a small account, risking $50 per trade to where I am now.